Kristan Frager, helping you make sense of life's daily challenges and much more on 970 WGTK. Doctor, my eyes have seen the year and the slow parade of fears that I cried. Now I want to understand. Doctor, my eyes. All right. Hi, psychologist Dr. Stan Frager here with Dr. Eli Karam. And we're talking about co-parenting after divorce and what we should and should not say, what we should and should not do. And a lot of times the the children become the victims in these kind of things. And they become the victims because they fare the worst. The two parents are glad to be rid of each other. And in the meantime, the children end up very confused. In fact, Dr. Karen, we were talking a little bit about uh, what parents should and shouldn't say. Yeah, we're back and, to uh, sometimes. The the children in a divorce become, for example, the pal, or they see him the, almost like the substitute partner for the one they got divorced from. Right. It's like they're the new surrogate spouse, the person that is the sounding board they vent to all the time. And I was just telling you on the break that I have, um, have dealt with a mother and a teenager where and she just says sometimes when she's frustrated with the divorce or she's feeling depressed, she tells her teenage son a lot of inappropriate things. And the son is almost like, you know, he's being the spouse to her, and he doesn't want to do that. And he's trying to tell her that in a nice way. I wrote down some of the things that I've heard and, and people have told me in my office, you know, it, what not to say when, when parents are frustrated because of the divorce or frustrated with the child. If you don't behave, I'll send you to live with your father. I hear that one a lot. Uh, you can't trust him. Um, you'll leave me someday just like he did. Uh, that was uh, sometimes um, I've, I've heard that. Um, yeah, I've heard that one yeah. myself. You're all I have. You're the only person left to rely on, which puts an inordinate amount of stress on that child or sometimes teenager when they're trying to get on with the developmental task of where they're at, having friends, getting ready to go to school. I mean, that is a, a horrible burden to have, and it stops a lot of people from moving on, maybe going to a school they got into, leaving out, branching on their own, feeling like they have to take care of that parent. And no parent goes into it trying uh, or wanting to have that effect on their child. It happens on an unconscious level. They're in the bubble of their divorce and their family, and they almost they don't see it uh, until the, the child starts or a teenager starts manifesting these symptoms we've been talking about, which are kind of these acting out behaviors or sometimes internalizing depression, mm-hmm. shutting down. Eventually, if uh, they have young children, typically the couples end up dating again. At what mm-hmm. point does one of the parents, either the woman or the man, start saying, "Well, I'm, you know, here's somebody new. Here, here's my friend." Do you do that right off the beginning? Do you think it's appropriate? At what point do you say, uh, "Daddy really likes"? Susie here, this new lady, and uh, you ought to meet Susie. One of the biggest mistakes I see is parents uh, trying to get over their own um, uh, hangover from the divorce, if you will, whether it be they're depressed or they want to move on and they want some companionship. They get in a relationship too quickly, which is one thing, but then they they introduce that person who they don't even know, is is, is that person going to hang around? Are they a good fit for me? They introduce them to their child or children, and that's a no-no. So you want to make sure this is a good person once you start dating again. And in an ideal, in these cooperative colleague type of relationships, you want to tell your ex, your co-parent, that before you introduce the child. You want them on board. Because there's nothing worse, again, than the child being caught in the middle and getting pumped from information from dad about mom's new boyfriend. So you want to make sure in these in these good divorces, the parents have the talk before uh, I'm introducing uh, our children to to so and so. We've been going out for so long, but there's no rule of t- uh, rule of thumb. But it shouldn't happen too soon, and it should only happen after you know this person, this new relationship is someone that's going to stick around and would be a good influence on your children. Well, there's two things you just brought up that are very important. One is that. That very often when we go through a divorce, it's easy to fall in love. We, we in the literature, the research literature, we see things about um, on the rebound and and that kind of thing. We feel an emptiness, and so it's easy to try and fill that vacuum with somebody. And you really do think you love the person or like the person a lot. But it's really in response to having just gone through a bad divorce or any divorce. Right. Uh, the difference between uh, sliding into something versus deciding. You want to make sure, is this is this a rebound or is this someone you really could see yourself being with and could see your children being with? I mean, it might be a great fit for you, but if this person does not have children or has their own baggage, um, you even if it's great when you two are alone, 
when you bring the children into it, you know, you expand the family and blend. It might not work as well. That that and that term blended family, people even in the best kind of merged um, step families, whatever, they don't really blend that well. It is it is a transition for for many many families. And that's one of the hardest things in the world, isn't it? When both parents, you you decide to get serious about someone else. You got there's my kids, your kids, and then sometimes our kids. Yeah. So yeah. I'm bringing some children into the relationship. The spouse. My intended now has some children, plus maybe we want to have another baby. Right. So we're talking about not just that new person meeting your children, but if that new person has children, those children meeting, and how do you do that? And certainly you can't rush that, and you need to be able to talk and have a good plan about that, and you want to let your ex know about all of this stuff, too. All right, talking with Dr. Eli Karen, we're talking about co-parenting after divorce. Give us a call, 571. 571-